Hey everyone, welcome to day two of math, but also we didn't do this page. So I'm going to write down here day one for our math facts here. We'll go through just this part quickly and then hop over to the other day two stuff. So this is easy counting by fives, right? So six, ten, nine, five, three, seven, ooh, two, <laughs> four, ooh. Nine, one, one, seven, two, four. Hmm. How are you doing with this? This is hard for me. This is making my brain think. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Six. <laughs> but once you get into it, it all comes back. I think that if this was rough for us, maybe we're a little rusty on our math facts. You can see which ones are causing me problems. Some for me are very easy and other ones take me a second to think about. But once I start this, now, for example, 30 is not going to confuse me anymore. Na, na, na. The more I do it, check that out, I'm getting faster. Are you proud of me? I'm proud of me. 7, 6, da, na, na, 10, na, 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 6, 8. That one still got me. 9, 10, 9, 2, 7, Four. Oops, that one took me a second, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Three, five. There are your answers. If you're watching this, I'd pause it right there. Check your answers and have maybe one of your parents or your siblings just read down. And um, if I were you on your paper, I'd just draw a line right there since that's all we got to today. And just say, okay, first column, six, ten, nine, five, three. And if you find any errors on my part, I would love to know about that too because you guys know I'm not perfect. And since I did that so quickly, I might have made some errors. Let's hop over to our day two. And I'll write day two at the top. Look at our DMR. Day two. Dice, una panadería hizo 32 roscas el lunes, 58 roscas el miércoles y 19 roscas el viernes. ¿Qué opción muestra la mejor estimación para la cantidad de total de roscas? So, yo veo aquí estimación. We're going to round. 32, closest to 30. 58, cercano a 60. Y 19 es como 20. Si lo sumamos, 0, 9, 10, 11. Ciento diez. Perfect. ¿Qué ecuación muestra esta matriz? Tenemos cuatro filas por tres en cada grupo, que es igual a doce. They didn't even try to trick you there, which was nice. They didn't put three times four. Número tres. Gwen recibió de cada miembro de su familia dos fotografías para su álbum. Recibió un total de doce fotografías. ¿Cuántos miembros de la familia le dieron fotografías a Gwen? Pues, si cada uno le dio dos, por no sabemos cuántos miembros de la familia, y al final ella termina con doce, también podemos hacer doce dividido por dos. We can take twelve divided by two, y es igual a seis. Así que seis miembros de la familia. A ver, aquí, el piso de la sala de estar de Tracy... Mide nueve pies de longitud, nueve pies y siete pies de ancho. ¿Cuál es el área? We did this yesterday, right? On Monday, anyways, day one. Vamos a multiplicar nueve por siete es igual a sesenta y tres. That is not the answer, correct? La respuesta correcta es treinta y seis, o sea, sesenta y tres pies cuadrados. However, you have lines, así que yo quería ver um, el sala, or la sala de estar de Tracy mide 63 pies cuadrados. Always answer with that complete sentence if you've got space and you can. Cinco, escribe una familia de operaciones con 3, 7 y 21. 3 por 7 es igual a 21. 7 por 3 es igual a 21. 21. Dividido por 7 es igual a 3. 21 dividido por 3 es igual a 7. And on some of your papers, I might also see a cute triangle, 
with 21 at the top, 7, and 3. That way we know 3 times 7 is equal to 21, 7 times 3 is equal to 21, 21 divided by 3 is equal to 7, 21 divided by 7 is 3. Just make sure that on these two, that 21 comes first because that is the biggest number that we're going to have and you've got to divide that big number into these groups. Chlen, I think her, Chlen, Chen, maybe her name was supposed to be Chen. Chlen tenía cuatro cajas de naranjas. Cada caja tenía seis naranjas. Regaló a sus amigos todas las naranjas excepto diez. Wow. ¿Cuántas naranjas regaló? Ok, primero vamos a multiplicar. Seis por cuatro es igual a 24. She had 24 naranjas. Y aquí, léelo con cuidado. Read this very carefully. Regaló a sus amigos todas las naranjas excepto 10. She gave away all of them but 10. We can still subtract 10 from this, but the number we're looking for is how many she gave away. So if she's got 10 left, vamos a restar. 4 menos 0 es igual a 4. 2 menos 1 es igual a 1. Así que ella, complete sentence, regaló 14 naranjas. <laughs> ok. Fred pasea al perro de su tía tres veces a la semana y gana 2 dólares por cada paseo. ¿Cuánto dinero habrá ganado en tres semanas? Pues mira, there are two steps here. Primero, él pasea al perro Tres veces por dos dólares. Así que tres por dos dólares es igual a seis dólares. Pero él va a hacerlo por tres semanas. He's going to earn that six dollars for three weeks. So six plus six plus six. O seis por tres es igual a dieciocho dólares. Ok. He earns two dollars for every time he walks them. And he walks them three times a week. So he gets six dollars a week. Times three weeks, $18. And if you're being a really smart third grader, él habrá ganado $18. Gary vende 87 paquetes de arándanos azules en un mercado. Arándanos azules, chicos, are blueberries. Redondea a la decena más cercana la cantidad de paquetes de arándanos que vende. All right, redondea. We're going to play Johnny Goes to the Bathroom. So here are our houses. And we've got 87. So the decena más, la decena may, menor es 80, mayor 90. And then we're going to draw our line. <laughs> now, Johnny, we're going to look next to the decena at the 7. He's at the 7. Aquí. So if Johnny has to go to the bathroom, should he go to his friend's house or stay home? You're right. He's going to his friend's house. So... Redondeando, he's got más o menos 90 arándanos. Woo! We did it, friends. All right, let's go on to our other questions. I think there's only like six today. Brandon drew the two congruent squares shown. Remember, congruent means that they're the same size and shape. Okay, so like this heart and this heart, if they were perfect, are congruent. But, for example, this heart and this heart are not because they're bigger and smaller. He divided one square into two congruent triangular parts. There you go. He divided the other square into two congruent rectangular parts. I'm going to go up and down. You could have gone horizontally too. Which statement is true? Each triangular part and each rectangular part represents one half of the area of one square. Well, look guys, as long as they're equal pieces, this is one half and this is one half. And this is, I did not do the best line in the middle there, but this is one half and this is one half. So I like that answer. Each triangular part has an area that is greater than each of the area of the rectangular parts. Now, it might look like it depending on your perspective, but that's not true because this is exactly half of that square and this is exactly half of that square. All right, so that's not true. Each triangular part and each rectangular part represents one fourth. No, if it were one whole big piece, but they're two squares, so no. They're each one half. Each rectangular part has an area that is greater. Once again, that's like number two. This answer and this answer are the same. If they're the same idea, then that means that they can't be true. 
or they're both right, <laughs> depending. So no, they're each one half. It's just they look different. But if this was our sandwich, remember that comic strip that we saw with Family Circus? This is one half and this is one half. If I make the same size of sandwich, then it wouldn't make a difference. Now, if one square was bigger, that would be a different conversation, right? But since they are the same, then cutting it this way and cutting it this way, it's all the same sandwich. So your correct answer was F. Yay. Felix swam, rode his bike, and ran in a race. He spent 19 minutes swimming, 21 minutes riding his bike, and 30 minutes running. What was the total amount of time that he spent swimming, riding his bike, and running the race? So I think it's easiest for us. We were just getting into this when we left school. I think it's easiest just to go ahead and add up the minutes, and then we'll look at how much time that is, right? So 9 plus 1 is 10. Regroup a 10. Put it over here. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. So he did 70 minutes. Is that an option? Of course not, because that's not how time works, right? But we know that one hour is how many minutes? 60. You're right. Two hours. Oh, gosh. Who remembers that? Say it out loud. This is like Dora. <laughs> 120. So as he reached 120, no. So we don't need that one. So it's one hour, and then you could take 70 minus the 60. That's the hour, and you're left with 10 minutes. So it's one hour and 10 minutes. He did that for one hour and 10 minutes. Whew. He probably needs a nap. He's probably tired. There are eight oranges in a bag for sale at the store. Eight oranges in each bag. Which table shows the relationship between the number of bags and the number of oranges? So this is like basically the number of bags times eight should be the number of oranges. So in two bags, if there's eight in each, that would be eight plus eight, which is 16. So we're looking for two. 16, so not F, to, no, not F, not H, sorry guys, to 16, <gasps> to 16, all right, so we've narrowed it down, do you see that process of elimination, loving that, now, three bags, three times eight, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, we're looking for 24, so I like this, I do not like 32, so we can cross that out, so, I think that it's important when you're doing these, you could go through on each single one, but if you can make it faster with process of elimination, it'll be a lot easier. And finally, oh, no, not finally, <laughs> kidding. Which figure cannot be classified as a prism? Um, I don't expect any of you to have known this because we did not get to geometrical shapes yet. So a prism is like here, this is a rectangular prism because the base is a rectangle. This is a cube here, which is also a type of prism. And then this is a triangular prism because the base is a triangle. This is a cylinder. So even though they look similar, they're all 3D shapes, a cylinder is not a prism. Okay. You might have known just by looking at them. If I said, which one's different? You could tell me that one has a circle, whereas these all have linear bases, right? Number 12. Stacy used 21 feet of ribbon to make bows. She used three feet of ribbon for each bow. Which equation can be used to find the number of bows? So she's got 21 feet and she's going to divide it into sections of three feet, basically, right? So we could do three feet times how many bows is equal to 21 feet, or we could do 21 feet divided by three. So we can't do 21 times three, goodness gracious, no. Um, 21 divided by three, we said we like that one, that one maybe. We're not gonna add it. We're definitely cutting the ribbon into pieces, so no, we don't like that one. And we're not gonna take away either. So your correct answer would be G. But remember, you could also do three times what equals 21. And finally, fraction strips are shown. Now, I hope that on your paper maybe you wrote down what the fractions were, so this would be one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So these are one sixths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these are one eighths. Okay, so we've got one six, one sixths, and eight, one eighths. Which comparison and explanation are true? Five sixths, so here, is less than five eighths. Let's check it out. 
One, two, three, four, five.